Tokenmetrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors. Our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com. What is up, everyone? How are you doing? So today we are actually hijacking Bill's live stream as he is at Consensus. Uh, so I am a research analyst here at Token Metrics, Jacob Kochgalp, and I'm joined by our director of research, Mehdi. Um, comment down below where you're tuning in from. We'd love to see our kind of global Token Metrics family. Uh, so today we're going to share with you um, kind of our views on Polygon Matic, um, our investment thesis, as well as some innovations from Web2 that are coming to Web3. Um, so Medi can kick it, kick us off. Um, Hi and, everyone. But, re but, but real quick, let's see where people are tuning in from. We have Sam back from Orange County, Ali from London, and Carl is saying he likes your jacket, Medi. Yep, it's a it's a boxing vest. Uh, I got it from Trading Battle, so shout out to Trading Battle. Uh, I I basically went on on that show with Bill, uh, and and basically won 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 that uh, boxing vest. Awesome. All right, guys. Uh, so without further ado, I'm just going to jump right into the alpha alpha of the show. So before uh, before um, before this bear market, I didn't own Matic. And now, since the price have gone down a lot, and after my 100x shows with Sandeep, I've become really bullish on Matic. Again, it's not financial advice, but for my long-term portfolio allocation, I'm buying this coin. Uh, so I'm, I'm just going to uh, just give you why I'm buying it, why I'm bullish, and maybe uh, share some of my excitement with you guys and hopefully convince you that it's, 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 a, it's a great opportunity. So again, at the moment, the way the market is thinking about Polygon is just as a POS chain. So at the moment, you have different dApps on Polygon, uh, some of the Ethereum-based dApps on Polygon, and, and that's what market thinks of Polygon. But the reality is Polygon is just not one chain. It's honestly seven blockchains, seven L2s, building on top of uh, Ethereum. So my investment thesis for Matic is, let's say after the merge, if, if Ethereum goes up higher, Polygon will go even further higher because it has seven blockchains built on top of Ethereum. So in, in financial language, we call this higher beta play. And I feel the mar markets are ripe for L2 uh, narrative. I feel markets will price in L2 thesis and will prefer L2s in next 18 months to 24 months uh, and, and, and prefer less alternative layer ones since the Ethereum is going to emerge. And also, uh, also Ethereum is on a roadmap to incorporate uh, different L2s. Right, so so with uh, Polygon, you can just see on the screen there's a there's a big product stack. So on the left hand side you have Polygon Edge. Uh, Polygon Edge is basically very similar to Avalanche and Polkadot. With Polygon Edge you can mil build new blockchains, and these blockchain will be similar to Polygon and can be launched on top of Ethereum. So again, I'm very excited about this product, and because of this product. You cannot have one, two, three, four, five blockchain. You can literally have hundreds of blockchain and all the value will accrue back to, token, uh, to Matic token because a lot of the blockchains will use Matic validator set to secure the network. So they can spin up L2s using Polygon toolkit and hence one of the reasons why I like Polygon. The second reason why I like Polygon is they have this product called Polygon Away. If you can see on my screen, this segment, uh, so on this side of the uh, spectrum, you have no shared security with Ethereum. And on the extreme right hand side, you have shared high shared security with Ethereum. And something in middle is, is Polygon Avail. Polygon Avail is very similar to Celestia. So if you guys are aware of Celestia, Celestia is doing a unique solution on data availability and will actually be an Ethereum competitor. So what Polygon is saying, you know what, if Celestia can do this, we can do this as well, and we can do this by leveraging Ethereum. 
So Ethereum will be a global settlement layer and every blockchain that builds on top of Ethereum can use Polygon avail, avail for consensus and all the consensus can then be consensus down into Ethereum. So basically think of Polygon Avail as a layer zero for all the blockchains being built on, on top of it and all the transactions then get submitted to Ethereum as a, as a layer one, as a final settlement layer. So again, a very, very interesting innovation. Again, something market, in my opinion, it's not looking at. And then on top of that, on the extreme right hand side, you have L2s. So not just one L2s, you have four different flavors of L2. And I, I'll go in depth with regards to each one of them. But basically what these L2s are, they are individual blockchains that are leveraging the security of Ethereum. Why does it make sense to leverage the security of Ethereum? Because Ethereum is, is, is the granddaddy of all the blockchains, it's the most decentralized, most secure blockchain out there. So basically using that security and decentralization and building a blockchain on top of it that can be very scalable with high throughput of transactions, like millions of transactions done on top of that decentralized network. So you have four different versions and four different uh, flavors of those L2s. So at the moment, you guys have seen Optimism. You have seen uh, some of the other L2s being built. But in case of Matic, you, you, you have four in one combo. So again, this is one of the reasons why I like Matic. Again, this is for long term portfolio allocation. This is not for short term portfolio allocation. Again, just tune in uh, after 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 my and, and Jacob segment, then you'll also have market updates. So I, I know you want to see Bill and, and, and Bill's market update. So just bear with us because I think this is a very interesting uh, investment opportunity for all of you guys if you are into building a long term uh, product portfolio. So uh, as I said, you have different flavors of uh, L2s and basically this goes uh, in depth of what those uh, what those L2s purpose would be. You have star, you have snark and you have all of this weird stuff. So. So, so for me, the most important one is the Nightfall, which they have partnered up with EY, which is one of the big four. And they'll use this blockchain for privacy and KYC for other corporate member. And then you have three different uh, solution, which basically will be for retail clients. Now, again, I'll, I'll, I'll post the link for the whole presentation on the description down below uh, after my presentation ends. And you can go down and read about it and see which of the L2s you like. And again, if you don't like any particular L2, maybe you like just one of them. Again, at the end of the day, all the value accrual of all the seven products that Matic is producing will boil down to the Matic token. So again, it's a no brainer. Again, not financial advice. So again, uh, let me just summarize the thesis again. So Ethereum will be the settlement layer. And on top of that, you'll have different blockchains being built. Polygon is one, two, three, four, five, six. Six products built on Ethereum. While when you buy Optimism token or Arbitrum token in the future or Stockware token, you're just buying one blockchain in itself. So this is the investment thesis. And, and, and again, one of the key reasons why I like it. Uh, the investment thesis doesn't end here. With other blockchains like Optimism, Arbitrum, you're just buying the promise in the future there will be an ecosystem. But in case of Matic, you already have a vibrant ecosystem that leverages Indian talent from India and Middle East really well. And you can see from, from this diagram, uh, how many different apps are being built. Just to be very precise, there are more than 8,000 dApps at the moment live on Polygon. Uh, so that's the blockchain part. You also have Web2 and corporate partnership. Polygonmatic has partnered with Facebook Meta. So Facebook Meta for the Instagram will use Polygon Network for their NFTs. So showcasing all of the NFTs and ownership of the, all of those NFT, NFTs will be read on the block, Polygon blockchain. So I think this is a breakthrough in, uh, breakthrough partnership for uh, Polygon. Apart from that, you have DraftKing. So that would bring sports betting to Polygon and you have Stripe that will bring payment layer, uh, global payment layer to Polygon. So again, very strong partnerships. And I believe Polygon under the leadership of Sandeep has all the right tools and right leadership to get that web to mass adoption uh, going. And we're just seeing some glimpses of that at the moment. So is it cheap? You can have amazing product, but you can also have issue of very high valuation. So for example, Binance Smart Chain at the moment is 50, around $50 billion. Uh, Maddie might have froze there. Okay, well, Mehdi froze out, so while we're waiting, 
um, we can read the chat, see where everyone's tuning in, tuning in from. Uh, so we have Auto Jam from Jamaica, Premier Hip Hop from Orlando, Villa Baboon from Belgium, Moses from Sao Paulo, Gil Noor from Israel, Steve from South Africa. Um, and yeah, someone was asking where the old man was, where Bill is. He is at Consensus. He is speaking on a few panels. Um, and I see Crypto Lion from Arkansas. Uh, Dollar Menu said, what did y'all do with Bill? Yeah, so we actually sent him away. We hijacked it. But make sure to stay tuned after on the Token Metrics channel. There will be uh, Bill's market update. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, so we're going to take a quick break now um, from Medi's wonderful. Um, oh, there we go. There's Medi's back again. So he's going to continue his presentation. But before he does, down below, I have two tasks for you guys. One, make sure to hit the like button if you're enjoying this live stream so far. And two, either say whether you're bullish or bearish on Polygon. So right now, I'll just type in bullish or bearish, and then we, we can kind of get a sentiment of the chat. Right back so before I conclude it, yeah, before I conclude it, uh, I, I know I was having some technical uh, difficulties. Was I able to present all of this? And, and no, then, no. then, yeah, okay. So I'm, I'm just going to reiterate, reiterate my investment thesis for Polygon. So firstly, you have seven blockchain product that all accrues value back to Matic token. So with one token, you're buying seven blockchains. So that's the number one point. The number two point is you have strong Web2 partnership. And at the moment, blockchains are like what, like, 15, 20 million people using it, and we need billions of people on board it. So that billion will come from Web2. Web and this is where Polygon Matic is shining because of some of the partnerships and Deep and, and his team has been able to get, get from. And then you also have this narrative of L2 being superior than alternative L1 narrative. I think that will definitely happen after the merge. And I think this is a key narrative to keep, keep an eye on. So Optimism, Arbitrum, all of these L2 tokens will rally. And I feel once the market realizes all the seven blockchain product and when all of these blockchain product was live, Matic will basically, in my opinion, rally like crazy. Again, not financial advice. Then on top of that, you have 8,000 dApps at the moment and you multiply that by seven. That's just like too many to count. And then finally, you have very interesting, very, I, I, would, I would say the word sexy. You have sexy valuation. You're buying at current prices, 40 to 50% cheaper than what VCs, VCs paid in the last round. VCs paid around 10 to $12 billion, uh, around 90 to $1.1. Uh, $1 you're getting Matic for 60 pence at the moment, 60 cents at the moment. So you're buying it cheaper than VC. So if you combine all of these five points, you get like a powerful punch, punchy investment thesis. And that's why that's why I like in the term Matic and I've bought it for myself. Again, I'll repeat this, not financial advice. Uh, I'll, I'll take some question if you have, uh, Jacob, if some of our audience has over here, and then um, basically we can jump into some of the other projects we like. Yeah, for sure. So I have a couple questions, and then I do see there are some questions in the chat, so I'll throw you mine first. So you s slightly mentioned the Ethereum uh, merge, the Ethereum 2.0 turning to proof of stake. So do you, so do you think that Polygon is a better buy than Ethereum now? before uh, ETH 2.0? And do you think after ETH 2.0, do you think it will be kind of an all tides, uh, like the tide r rises all boats situation? So if ETH goes up, Polygon goes up, what are your thoughts on that? Very good question. I think the tide will rise everyone up. So Ethereum goes up, all the layer two goes up. So Optimism token, which is live at the moment, will go up. But in my opinion, once the market sees all of the products I've just mentioned, I think it will go up three, four times higher, like three, four times much um, with much more intensity than Ethereum because you're getting a lot of the products that are building on top of Ethereum. So in case of Optimism, you just have one blockchain. But in case of Matic, you have seven blockchains and the optionality of having subnets and parachain like Avalanche and, and Polkadot being built on Ethereum through Matic and all of the value accrues to Matic. So again, for me, um, if Ethereum starts going higher, Matic will go higher at a higher pace. But if Ethereum goes down, Matic will suffer even a bit more than Ethereum. Mm -hmm. So it's like a higher beta play. So in traditional finance, higher bet beta means higher sensitivity, higher sensitivity, sensitivity to price up and higher sensitivity to price down. So if, so if uh, Ethereum doubles, then Matic will 5x. But if Ethereum loses 50%, then Matic will exactly. lose 8%. 
exactly i i don't have a crystal ball but that should be the case like it, i think it has about 2 to 2.5 uh, beta so for example if ethereum goes 1x it will do 2x if ethereum goes 2x it will do 4 to 5x got it yeah and so i'm reading some uh, questions from the stream if you guys have any more questions on polygon please drop them down right now but kind of on your crystal ball note one person is asking what the best price for polygon is um, another person says, please tell me the bottom of Polygon. And then uh, kind of on that similar note, good dollar cost average right now or later? Uh, I would say just have a dollar cost uh, average strategy. So the way I did it, I'll just show you my, like give you my perspective. I bought 25% uh, Polygon Matic that I wanted to buy. Uh, the reason I just, just went there and FOMO'd in was, let me just share my screen again and, and give sure. you a perspective. Um, so, so if I can share my um, screen with, with regards to uh, this episode with Sandeep. So I do recommend you to go on uh, uh, Token Metrics and underneath the 100x show, I did a podcast with the founder of uh, Polygon, uh, Sandeep, and this is our fourth podcast. And in this podcast, I basically kind of inquired about everything, every questions I had. Like I showed him the ecosystem, asked him some of the projects he likes from Polygon ecosystem. I asked him about the product stack and literally, honestly, as soon as the um, episode ended, I went to Binance and uh, some of the salary and cash I had, I just basically bought Matic. Again, I FOMO'd in a bit, but I am cognizant the market is choppy at the moment. So I'll just buy 25%. My time horizon is not six months, one year. I'm not, I'm not into that game. Bill knows how to play that game. I don't, unfortunately. So the way I kind of navigate uh, this kind of market, I buy 25% now, then I buy 25% at four, like 45, 50 cents, 25% at 25, 20 cents. And hopefully if it goes to 10, 10 cents, I buy a bit more. So that's how I'm going to play it. Uh, I have been looking at Matic since 10 cents. Uh, and, and, and basically I saw it go up to $2, $2 and half dollars. And I always wanted to have some exposure, but now the market have given me this present for long term and given my time horizon is three years plus, I believe this is a steal. But again, that doesn't mean steel cannot go 50% down from. Yeah. So what Mehdi is saying is it's a value play. So right now it can go lower. The market definitely, we can see kind of a bloodier market. But if you dollar cost average, you can buy 10%, 20%. Now, if it goes down 10% more, you buy the next part. It goes down 10% more, you buy the next part. And then once it rises again, maybe you buy 10% more and then you just hold for three years and hopefully it, it works so, out. So, so, Jacob, so Jacob, I just looked at um, uh, uh, the token metrics platform. So over here, this is the best platform if you want to use it for uh, trading. So even though I'm re really bullish long term, but the trading fundamentals are not that bullish at the moment. The grade is a bit low. So basically the machine is telling me the market will go down further. So, so again, buy Polygon Matic DCA over, but just be cognizant, even though I like it, but the algorithm, uh, the machine doesn't like it at this price. Yeah. Machine wants it to go, go lower. But if you see the fundamental grade, man, it's 90% over here. And if you see the quantitative and technical analysis grade, uh, the machines are telling you this uh, indication. Let me just zoom in a bit more. Machines are telling you that it, it can go lower. So again, if you just want a uh, all in all in all platform that shows you the fundamental grade, which I just did, uh, just subscribe to Token Metrics. You can get the trading signal and as well as investment signal. Uh, yeah, here. for sure. So yeah, so from that we're seeing its fundamentals, its long-term value play is very strong. But if you look at the technical analysis, the quant grades from our AI, it's saying short term, it's not, it may not be a great buy now because the overall market is probably going to continue to tank. Um, so obviously everything is going to go down, but you, if you are building a long-term portfolio, you want something with a high fundamental grade. You want something that's a very strong project with strong founders and strong partnerships as Medi showed Exactly, well. exactly. Like, see, I like, I like this project so much, again, not financial advice, that I just didn't wanna put this in, like I didn't want the market to have an edge over me. I just I just didn't want to be dictated by market with regards to how I buy my method. So I basically formed it in. 
Uh, but if you follow the market and if you follow the algorithm, basically the algorithm is telling you like wait, wait a bit more. The reason I just form it in because I feel inflation, even though it's high right now, it's kind of a uh, peaking. So I just still wanted some exposure. Uh, so in case if, if, if we have the print where we see inflation peaking out, then what we can see is we can see a debt get bounce or we can see a rally again. And I just wanted to just buy the polygon now and not just buy it at 70, 80 cents. And hence I did that. But that doesn't mean that it can not go down. If it go down, buy, I'll, buy the, I'll, I'll buy, buy more. Awesome. Yeah, so. I, I see one. Sorry, sorry Jacob, I'm interrupting yeah, you. Ahead. I see this go question. Is it, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it a better play than ADA? So just thinking as a trader, thinking as an investor, the way I'll play this, again, not financial advice, I'll go long on Matic and short Cardano. This is how I'm going to play it. Not saying Cardano is bad, poor, whatever. Like there's a market sentiment for that. But I definitely think Matic's fundamental surpasses what we have at the moment for Cardano. So buying Matic and shorting Cardano. So in this way, even if the market tanks, I believe Matic can outperform Cardano in six months horizon. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I, I'm definitely... I am bullish on kind of Cardano's strategy. I know that's a hot take. A lot of people don't like Cardano, but I do like Cardano. I think they're kind of targeting emerging markets in Africa and trying to build infrastructure there is great. Um, and obviously Charles Hoskinson is very smart, but we haven't seen much execution. Um, so that's kind of why it's been stagnant. Yeah, Black Star Crypto, I'm crazy. Yeah, maybe I am, but I think the best traders might be a little crazy. Um, so, so yeah, awesome. So yeah, everyone, please uh, comment down below uh, what your thoughts on Polygon is and whether, um, oh yeah, it was Cardano will destroy Matic. Oh, okay, so Black Star actually agrees with me and not agrees with me, but likes Cardano. Um, I'm going to I'm going to see the platform. I'm going to see a uh, token metric platform to see in short run if our platform at the moment is a bullish Cardano. So let me uh, yeah, let's take just a look at the this. screen. Oh, there you go. So so basically <laughs> machine is telling machine is bullish on Cardano in the short run at least. So if you're just trading, maybe perhaps if you're trading for a couple of months time horizon, uh, you can basically go long Cardano. But again, this is not long term uh, grade. So long term fundamentals grades are lower than um, yeah. Matic, but the technical analysis at the moment is giving you a buy signal. Um, so, so, so yeah, again, so Card Cardano is a great short-term play, 91% quant grade, so a trading strategy is great, but its fundamental is 60% when Polygons is 90%. And this is our magical AI telling you this, not us. Yeah, I'm just curious to see if it, if it becomes part of today's. Okay, so even like on a daily basis, we, we have this portfolio, right? So on daily portfolio, Cardano is part of the portfolio along with Tron. So this is like a this is for trading ideas, right? This is for not investing idea. So if somebody is bullish Cardano, uh, our machine is telling us for a trading idea, not for investment idea, for trading idea, uh, definitely go for it at least on a daily horizon. I'm just checking out weekly horizon, weekly horizon not so much, and I'm also seeing monthly horizon. So if you're just trying to flip a token, I think Cardano could not be like Cardano is not a bad strategy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Awesome. And I'm glad to see our uh, platform uh, work in its magic. Um, but yeah, I can go right along. So I have three projects today that are kind of taking ideas from Web2 innovations and kind of, um, and making them into Web3 products. Um, and I'm going to be sharing each one of them. One's kind of Airbnb housing collective. The next one's Trello for Web3. And the last one is bringing traditional contemporary artists into NFTs and uh, Web3 art. I'm going to pause after each one and then we can have a little discussion in the chat. You can tell me whether you're bullish, whether you love the project, whether you hate it, and we'll go from there. So let me start sharing my screen and we can get, get started right away. So our, can you see the prod, see my screen? Oh, there we go. Uh, so the first one is Earth or earth6r.com. It's a distributed housing collective. So the way it works is you own one of these homes. They're going to have kind of a catalog of all their homes and you can, you actually go and purchase it. You can buy it in either fiat, Bitcoin or Ethereum. And you own this house. This is your house. You own the deed. You own the lease. You own everything. This is your house. However, this house is a node in their expanding network. So what's great about it is you can um, 
if you want to go travel to another place in the world, for example, if you want to go to Berlin or Mexico or upstate New York, you can leave your house and put it, make it open for anyone else in the housing collective to stay at your house and then you can stay at theirs. Um, you can also, if you want to leave your house and you don't want anyone to stay in your house, you can also choose that as an option. Uh, so for example, let's look at the house in Yucatan, Mexico. Um, so this is on the Yucatan coast. Uh, this is the house. Um, it, you can buy it for either 500 to 900,000 US dollars or 250 to 450 Ethereum. Um, they're all fully furnished, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, and yeah, so it's they have six more locations coming. Uh, they have, excuse me, they have six locations now, and they have uh, their next coming to London, San Francisco, uh, Austin, Lisbon, Singapore, New York, and a number of rural locations. Um, so yeah, it, so it's so the way it. It's kind of like Airbnb because you can stay in people's, uh, you can stay in other places around the world. But the way it's better than buying just a traditional house is because now you own the house just like you would buy buying a house in the Web two or traditional space. But now you're also a part of a collective, so you now have the ability to go travel around the world and stay at these places. They haven't mentioned whether you're going to be able to stay at them for free. They've mentioned a utility token or a governance token, so maybe you will pay in that. But this is also uh, another uh, kind of Web2 product is called Home Exchange, where you can uh, list your home and then people can stay in it or they can stay at yours and you can earn kind of their globe tokens. It's not a cryptocurrency. It's just kind of a Web2 uh, token that doesn't mean anything. So this is going to be similar, but bringing crypto into it. Um, what makes me very bullish on this is the team. So let's take a look at their deck and go down and take a look at their team. Um, so we have Christopher. Uh, he is an artist working in uh, AI and machine learning technology, and he has art in the uh, Museum of Modern Arts, and he funded his way through university doing real estate development. Uh, we have Isaac Wilder, their chief technology officer, an engineer with 10 years of software, hardware, and blockchain experience. And he scaled a machine learning startup, leading a team of 25 engineers. We have Annika, a uh, architect, sure, curator and designer, and has led cultural institutions for 10 plus years and alumni of Columbia, Tomas. Um, He's built a tech-enabled real estate management company, Brown University alumni, and we also have a uh, former Tesla. We have advisor to Uber, um, director officer for Office for Metropolitan Architecture, um, Vice Berlin. So definitely a strong team. And also, they had ju they just closed a twenty million dollar seed round um, with investments from the one and only Vitalik Buterin, uh, Pantera Capital. Dragonfly Capital, Robot Ventures, et cetera. So very strong investors and a very strong team. That's what makes me so bullish on it. Not so much the product. I think it's a good idea. I think it'll work. I don't love it. Um, definitely comment down below. Tell me what your guys' thoughts on it. But really what makes me bullish on it is their investors and the team. Um, and lastly, we can talk about their the token utility what exactly are, is going to be working with this token um so this token it's a utility token to govern a network of the homes they sell that's what they say so far don't know exactly what that means but we can also look at their their um slide on how to start a country in 2022 build a flexible home home ownership network use crypto etc but then number five, it says introduce a utility token to govern access to a dis distributed housing portfolio rather than owning the title on an individual home. So that's interesting because with their project, you're going to own the title in an individual home. But I'm assuming you're also going to get access to their tokens. You might get airdrop them. You might have to purchase them, but then potentially you would get the proceeds from renting or selling if the collective rents or sells houses or you have to use those tokens to rent at rent places. And for example, if you have an expensive house that and you rent it out to other members of Earth Collective, 
they will pay you in their in the earth token and then you have to pay to stay at their place etc that's all speculation we don't know but we definitely know there's going to be a utility token um so this is definitely something really interesting and i think it's one point is that this is obviously very targeted to millennials and crypto users because crypto people in crypto are definitely jet setters they like to travel they don't like to stay in one place um as you can see from the pitch deck it's definitely kind of edgy it's just a it's i've looked at a lot of pitch decks and i haven't seen one like this which is literally just white background with red text so i i, I think it's very interesting a great product um and yeah let's talk about it on let, let, let's see what um kind of yeah, so, everyone's comments so, are so jacob so Jacob, yeah, the reason sure. why I like it, the re reason why I like it is not because they're trying to copy Airbnb and all of that. I think there's a future optionality of them getting houses on as NFT and then basically also trying to perhaps, I'm just assuming here, perhaps break that NFT into individual tokens and then allowing mm -hmm. fraction ownership. So I think they can do a lot of crazy weird stuff and the crazier and the weirder, weirder it is, uh, the more reason I like it. That's the reason yeah. why I like altcoins and I don't own any Bitcoin, right? That's <laughs> so, very true. Yeah, crazier, weirder stuff uh, kind of resonates with me. And I think this is this is one of them. Uh, let's see. Uh, we, we wish them the best in terms of uh, the fundraising and in terms of the launch. Uh, but yeah, I think it's very interesting project. Yeah, yeah. So we can look at the comments real quick. Um, Iqbal says, yeah, that's a nice, cool idea to get F big time. Winky face. So he doesn't love it. Um, you go to Mexico with wallet address and 240 ETH and you will be sold pieces, LOL. So definitely not not loving it. Um, uh, hold on, is that their pitch deck? Red and white background? <laughs> um, checking into a crypto Airbnb sounds like a great way to sign up for home invasion. That's very true. Yeah, probably a good idea to grab your to grab, grab your Rolex wall there. Um, so, I mean, obviously, I'm assuming everyone's going to be doxxed um, and... Uh, and it, you're, you're staying at their place. They're not going to be there. But that is a great point is that privacy, safety. A lot of people in crypto like to be anonymous. Yeah. And um, if they're signing up for this collective uh, and people know that they can afford to pay in crypto, they might have some expensive stuff on that. So you're, you're right. That could potentially be making people a target. So th that's definitely a good point. But, but that's the thing, right? People, like when, the, when this collective will work, you just have the access to address rather than the individual person's identity. And also they can, let's say somebody can come to your house and you can go to somebody else's house and they don't need to know whether who you are and who they are. So I think from that perspective, it will be safe. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah. I kind of see the concern. But again, yeah. um, one, one of the person saying it's a, it's, it's a bear market. What are we doing? I know it's a bear market, but I just want to excite you guys about the future of Web3. Like at the moment, you're seeing Web2 companies trying to be replicated on Web3, yeah. and, and there's a lot of disruption and innovation happening. So even if there is a bear market, I think just to kind of still keep you hooked in for the next few years, uh, hopefully by then the bear market is over, you guys are hooked in and, and still kind of part of Web3, and that's that's one of the reasons why, uh, why we just want to hype you up about some of the things that will happen in the future rather than right now. Yeah, and I, I think it's also a great point. Like, yes, it is a bear market, and that's why these projects are important because the best projects that the ones that have done super well, like Ethereum, have been built in bear markets. It's when everything's down, when people lose hope, builders will still continue to build, and then they come out with great project projects. So, um, currently, like during this bear market, we're probably the next trend and the next kind of bullish 100x projects that we're going to be seeing in the next couple of years are, are being built now. Um, so that's why it, right now is a great time for builders. Um, but yeah, let's let's move on um, to the next project. Uh, it seems like the consensus that people didn't love this project, but it is a, in, a, a uh, wacky, innovative idea. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's move on to Dwork. So this is the uh, Trello uh, of Web3. It's um, it, it's a Web3 native project management with token payments, uh, credit credentialing, and bounties. So the way it works is uh, you can your DAO can either post to the public to anyone or to just a token gated group of DAO members and saying these are the tasks that we need to get done. Um, as you can see, uh, there's a uh, 
you have to do in progress in review and done very similar to Trello. But then what on top of it, you can also give bounties. So you can pay people in order to do tasks. You can take that from the Dow Treasury. So let's take a look at right now. So Jacob, that reminds me of LinkedIn. So I would classify this as both Trello and LinkedIn. This project yes. is trying to disrupt both of them simultaneously. So if you want to contribute to a DAO, they can give a bounty out. And just like a job placement, everybody can basically fight with each other to get that bounty. And I think a lot of people within the DAO can get a lot of stuff done. So I really like the idea. And I think if you are into DAOs and, and, and so on and so forth, definitely worth at least using the product or at least getting a demo. On. Yeah, for sure. And here's an example of it. So all for climate DAO posted this public. That's why I can see it because I'm not a part of that DAO. Um, for anyone to write a story about Bloom Network, they want you to write a story on Mirror and then give they gave their requirements. Um, this was posted on June 6th. Um, and so far, we've seen about 15 uh, applications. Um, and then if you get accepted and you write uh, a article up to their standards, you'll get rewarded in 200 DAI or 200 US dollars. Um, so these are all the public ones. For example, security bounties by pool together is offering 25,000 USDC reward. So obviously it's a, bit, a lot of incentives. So it, it, it helps kind of the lay person who wants to do these bounties, but then it also helps the project because they're getting a bunch of applications so they can make sure to get the highest quality work done. Um, and also it's like great for DAO structure because one big problem with DAOs now is that it's you need people running it. Like it, it, it's decentralized autonomous, but it, it's not like some robots running it. It, it. It's people running it. So there has to be kind of a collective of people and maybe a core group um, of the DAO. And so this kind of helps that you can still have maybe one founder, a few founders, and then they can't do everything for the DAO. So they just post their tasks at bounties from the, the DAO's treasury. And um, yeah, and then you then they can kind of get get the get the work in the DAO done. Um, so the team, we can talk about that. So right now, the uh, only in available information about the team is the CEO and co founder Lonis. Uh, Lonis is based in Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, he's an experienced DAO contributor. Uh, he was the first engineering contributor to city dow um, and he's worked as a business dev for a few years and founded a machine learning company which raised 20 million dollars um, we can look at the DAOs that are using this platform right now argon dow polygon dow city dow bankless dow um, juicebox dow the open dow a, a few very popular uh, DAOs. Um, and also this Dwork just raised $5 million and closed their seed round, which was led by co-led by Paradigm and Pace Capital. And Mehdi can tell you guys a little bit more about why that's so impressive and why those two uh, VCs, Paradigm and Pace Capital, are, so both are, are builders. leaders. Both are builders. They only pro invest in those projects where they can go above and beyond for the portfolio companies. Uh, I know for sure Pace uh, does not invest in 50-60. Uh, projects they are not like a spray and pray vc they're traditional web 2 vcs that have now done that are now looking into web, uh, web 3 uh, so they will only work with few projects and basically go uh, all the way uh, to moon and beyond to kind of help them uh, succeed so both are very strong and both are leading the round and again the cool thing about this project is they just raised seed round and after seed round, you have a product ready that just shows to you the builders are strong. The builders will build and, and they, they will deliver. Uh, so again, this is one of the project, not much for investment, but like for you guys to use. So if you guys are freelancers or some of you guys are looking to get into DAOs, maybe use this product to get involved in DAOs and try to earn some money while, while helping and while learning about Web3. Exactly. Yeah. So right now they haven't noted haven't noted anything about a token. So we don't know whether that's coming or not. So yeah, this is more just for uh, your guys' benefit to uh, maybe potentially use it in a DAO um, or share with your friends who are uh, into DAOs. Um, so yeah, definitely great uh, great investors with Paradigm and Pace. They also have uh, a former CTO of Coinbase and Sandeep who's the co-founder of Polygon, also invested in this product. So definitely uh, a, a, a very cool project. And again, we're seeing kind of the uh, Web 2 innovating into Web 3. So I want you all to comment down below whether you're bullish or bearish on Dwork. 
and uh, kind of we'll, we'll take it from there. Um, uh, and yeah, so let's move right on to the next product. Um, it's called Goda Gallery of Digital Assets. So what this is is uh, there. It's a uh, it's a collection or uh, a a. Uh, it, it, it's a project that's kind of dedicated to assisting traditional contemporary artists navigate the digital asset space. So whether that's uh, NFTs or other art on the blockchain, that's what this uh, project is dedicated on doing. They plan on curating collections that include renowned figures from the traditional art, wor uh, art world, as well as handpicked up and comers. So how do you get into this it's an nft so they have their uh membership uh mint pass uh which offers exclusive access to all the go to artists and drops um so here's that you can see the open c they have a total of 781 items they're going to have a thousand uh total right now the floor price is seven eth so around thirteen thousand us dollars um and this launched very recently I want to say it was only a couple days ago when it started minting and it already has 1.5 thousand uh, ETH volume. Yeah, it launched yesterday um, and it already has 1539 ETH volume. So a, a, a lot of a lot of interest. Um, and then uh, you'll see right now why this is a big product and why this is going to do well. So, so the way it works is Actually, first, let me show you the team and then uh, <laughs> then it'll all make sense. Uh, so let's take a look at the team. So I have Nina, a uh, contemporary artist. Um, she uh, has been featured at MoMA in a bunch of big museums. We have Sean Neff. So if any of you have heard the brand Neff, um, a, it was a skating brand and also a clothing brand. This is Sean Neff of the Neff. He's their brand whisperer. He's uh, kind of founded, invented, and advised for Neff. Sunbum, Moon, Beach House Group, Robinhood, Target, Sony, The Sandbox, etc. We also see Pharrell Williams, uh, extremely famous uh, artist, 13-time Grammy win award-winning uh, artist. So he's also on the team. Uh, we have another artist advisor who's a contemporary artist. Uh, we have Nick Adler, who's the longtime advisor to Snoop Dogg on all his tech and Web3 partnerships. Um, we have... Uh, Jimmy.eth, he is a very famous uh, NFT influencer. Um, we have a famous designer who's uh, designed for Analog, Neff, and worked on projects with Disney, Kevin Durant, Snoop Dogg, Wiz Khalifa, Marshmallow, um, and Ryan Ross, second generation art dealer, a private art advisor for 25 years. So they obviously, what you want to look in team is execution and then also their network. You can definitely tell that these people have a very, very large network uh, to get kind of all aspects of their business done. So they have they can they have access and they have their hands in all the art space, the fashion space, the music space, the NFT space, uh, the consumer space. So definitely a super strong team. Um, but so what exactly does the Mint Pass get you? So it offers exclusive access to the uh, go to artists and drops. Um, so what does that mean? It means that it gives the holders priority mint and allow lists for all of the future go to artist drops. So Goat is going to find either these contemporary artists and say, hey, like, let's get you an NFT collection. Let's let's kind of hold your hand and show you how to do it. Or they're going to find up and coming artists that aren't as famous and then also kind of curate them. And then they're going to drop these collections um, and give allow list spots to all the holders of the mint pass and potentially free mints to them as well. As you can see, any collection over 5,000 will get two. Between 1,500 and 5,000 will get one. And anything less than 1,500 will be treated on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, so definitely the, the team is really, obviously, it's a great idea. They're bringing web to art, uh, traditional contemporary art, into web three and they're doing that in a uh with a very strong team and as you can tell it, it the market knows that seven eth floor price it minted for one eth so that's already seven x and 1500 eth volume in just one day so th this is definitely this reminds me of proof collective um which is the uh the brand behind moonbirds if any of you guys are into nfts that's kind of one of the blue chip nft prod projects and really all uh proof 
the proof pass, it was very similar. You got you had 1,000 passes. Uh, we can take a look at it right now. We can see how much it's selling for. Um, but uh, it's it's very similar. But all it gets access to you is a private Discord, private group. Yeah, right now the floor price is 75 ETH. Um, and they also they created the Moonbirds, um, which was their profile picture uh, utility collection. But the thing is, all proof pass is is a private group. Um, so Goda has a lot more utility because it gives you access to all these very well-known artists and up-and-coming artist drops that are hand-picked so by the people in the art world. Yep. Yeah, one thing I want to remind our audience, uh, Jacob was one of the earlier people who identified Moonbirds. And anybody before they were even talking about Moonbirds, like a few months before when they only had like 30, 40 a Twitter subscriber, he basically identified Moonbirds. And he was like, wow, this could be a very interesting project. And, and and he was very bullish on it. So if he is telling you that this is similar to Moonbirds, I would definitely uh, listen and, and yeah. listen carefully. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so so Moonbirds, I found their Twitter account when they had 100 followers. There was nothing about it. I actually, you can go back into one of the NFT gem shows on this YouTube channel from a couple months back and see me saying like, I, have n I know nothing about this prod project, but... I, I see the team, I see what they've done with the proof pass, um, and it, it's going to do well. Um, and that was when the proof pass was at 30 ETH. At one point, it went up to 120 ETH. Right now, as you saw, it's at 80 ETH. And what I was going to say is I'm comparing it to Proof Collective, but it's better. It gives you the, the pass, uh, the go to pat, mint pass gives you more utility than the proof pass, and the, the team is a lot better. Not to say that the Proof Collective's team is not good. They definitely have are very well known and have their hands in the NFT space, but they're not. A, they don't have Pharrell Williams. They don't have Neff uh, from the Neff brand. So this is just a much stronger brand, and I think it has more utility. and And they're going to be able to co connect a lot of people that aren't into NFTs, are not into crypto, and bring them into this space. So I'm super bullish on this, and I definitely think it, it's it it will outperform proof collective um so yeah please comment down below what you think about goda uh celebrities don't make me bullish i've trust issues but i do love pharrell um so kind of wishy-washy on that um bullish on polygon goda interesting bullish wow goda is to nfts as squarespace is to html i hope so because as a traditional artist the minting has made my brain melt so Kit is saying they're a traditional artist and they don't really understand like how to mint, how NFTs work. Um, and this is exactly what Goda is. It's to bring in artists, um, curate kind of collections and then give access to their their mint pass holders. Um, and yeah, so that that's all we have for today. If you guys have any other questions. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Wish I had the floor price to get in. Yeah, definitely, definitely expensive. Uh, 70. Um, yeah, 30 ETH is a lot for regular folks, much less 80 of them. But yeah, 30, yeah, very true. Um, but but um, that 30 ETH was the proof collective pass a while ago, and uh, the GOTA pass is only 7 ETH. Um, but yeah, so uh, that that's all we have for for today. If there's any other questions, drop them down below. But, but we really appreciate everyone listening here. I see someone saying, I just got on one bill. So stay tuned very shortly. Bill's market update will be coming and you will all get your your uh, much desired TA. Um, so Jacob, one of the consistent questions I've been receiving is my portfolio allocation, how I am basically buying. And I think yeah. a couple of weeks back, a couple of weeks back, I did share a link and nothing has changed. Apart from the fact that Matic, I was perhaps 7.5% allocated. Maybe perhaps now I get like to 10 to 12.5%. So I'm going to just share my link. Uh, share my link towards my portfolio allocation and, and, and basically walk you through in terms of how I'm allocating my portfolio. So just bear with me for one second. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I see a comment here from Zaylin, long-term investment plan family. Yeah, so that, that yeah, we're, we're your long-term guys and Bill is your kind of short, short-term TA guy. Um, looking at the Yeah, so that's the reason. Tell you. <laughs> yeah, that's the reason. What, because like that's the re literally the reason why I come once a week and and Bill is there five times a week because my time horizon is so long that I'm not needed for majority of the time. So once a week I'll, I'll just come in and just share with with you guys how I'm allocated. So my portfolio allocation 
it's 70% infrastructure and basically 20% gaming and metaverse and perhaps 10% individual NFTs or metaverse land. But at the moment, I'm not buying any NFTs or metaverse land and this 10% is allocated towards Coinbase equity share. And, and these are some of the honorable mention which I feel can, can also become part of your portfolio, depending if you like it or not. So things I really, really, really like is ETH. The reason I like it is Merge and L2 roadmap. AVAX, 10% of my portfolio. It's a bet on subnets and enterprise adoption. Then you have Solana. The reason why I like Solana is because they have a own native ecosystem, similar to ETH's own native ecosystem, and, and, and they have composable apps. So Ethereum, will, because of its L2 roadmap, will become slightly less composable, but a bit more scalable. And Solana will basically be, be more, bit more composable. Then I also have Near. I like it because it's it has a network effect at the moment. And it's it's, it's before the ETH sharding roadmap. I also like it. I like Matic because they have a unique portfolio. I also like Arbit. It's a bed on permanent storage. And Atom, I have it because of airdrops and Glamour, which is Moonbeep, which is my way of kind of betting on Polkadot and EVM. So if you are accumulating, majority of the things will come from this side of the portfolio. And there are some upcoming projects that I'm really bullish on. One is Celestia XLR Ceramic. I can do individual deep dives on it once the projects are out or maybe before the IDO. And these are some of the gaming and metaverse projects that I like. Sand, Mana, YGG, BreederDAO, Illuvium, uh, Merit Circle. And the, the, this is a 10% for NFTs and metaverse. But at the moment, I have just allocated towards uh, Coinbase equity shares. Uh, if it goes higher, then I, I'll use the money to buy some of this NFTs, but, which Jacob, of course, will help me. With. These are some of the honorable mention, which uh, these are some of the honorable mentions, which I feel if you have it in your portfolio, you're still fine. Uh, so I am going to share this link with you guys. Uh, our, our producer, who who is a gem, by the way, he'll he'll drop it. He, he'll drop the link down below. Share it yeah. with your friends and family. Uh, tweet it. Make this make this portfolio go viral because I feel this is like this is like a public good for the whole crypto family, for whole token metrics family, for everyone. Because this is the time to get bullish on crypto, not the time when Solana was two fifty dollars. Exactly. Yeah. So you have a few questions. So Megan asked, Medi, are you DCAing? Yes. So this is the this is a portfolio, not the honorable mention that I've just uh, highlighted. Mainly, these are the coins that I'm DCAing over. Oh, over a period of time. Got it. And then she also says no Bitcoin question mark question mark. So why no, don't no you Bitcoin. hold Bitcoin? I think Bitcoin is boring. Uh, also, boring. also, yeah, I think Bitcoin is boring. But at the moment, if you are looking for like short to medium term trade, I think Bitcoin will outperform all of these. But in the longer time horizon, I believe there is much more alpha in Ethereum, AVEX, or Lana, or Near, Matic, all of these uh, good projects with L1. Um, Bitcoin is like gold. Like gold is great, but I, I want to identify the next fang. I, I want the next Google. I want the ne next Facebook, Amazon, and these infrastructure projects are the next generation platforms. And these platforms will be multi-sided. You have developers, you have users, you have investors, and each of them will feed each other off, and then basically the price will increase. So that's the reason why I like all of these projects. Again. Bill will have a different opinion. I, I have a different opinion. I look three years ahead and I know half of the projects in my portfolio will go to zero. That's the reality. But the other half will more than compensate for that. So for example, if you have Ethereum's AVX Solana, if two of them dies, but Ethereum does 4x, I still outperform Bitcoin and I still outperform the traditional equity market. So I am a more of a long-term venture investing type of a person uh, where I'm okay. So in this bear market, 40% of my portfolio is wiped out. It went to zero, but then some of them have given me enough money or has made me enough alpha that I can still survive and I can still sustain my portfolio and beat them out. So my way of thinking is I buy 10 projects, again, not financial advice, four, five, six of them perhaps dies out or goes to zero, but four of them, perhaps because of my investment thesis and because I identify them, outperforms in such a way that it, it boosts my portfolio up. So again, there is no good or bad investment. Uh, what I'm saying is you have to play the probabilities and you have to size your risk appropriately. So I can have Bitcoin in my portfolio and I can just have it 0.01% and I'll be fine. But if I have Bitcoin, which is like 40, 50% of my portfolio, if Bitcoin goes down, then whole, all of my portfolio goes down simultaneously. So I, I don't think there is anything such as bad investment. It's just how you kind of size the investment and how you select the investment. 
Yeah, and I think also this is people aren't going to love this. It's very boring and in value investing, but it's it's the saying is time in the market beats timing the market. So it's hard of to course. obviously it's hard to say, oh, this is the bottom you should buy now. But if you DCA, you just keep buying, and your time horizon is three to five years, then okay, like let's say Ethereum's at seventeen hundred now, and then you buy it at twenty two hundred. That five hundred dollar difference sucks now in the short term, but in five years when Ethereum's ten thousand or twenty five thousand dollars five hundred dollars isn't going to be that big of a deal yes absolutely yeah uh, so i'm going to uh, I, I think our producer did share the link and i i just pinged him again and he'll share the link for that portfolio with you guys i do urge you to share it on twitter and share it with your friends and family i actually want this portfolio to go go viral so everybody can benefit from this uh, kind of consider it as a bear market uh, gift from token metrics and myself again not financial advice not, not financial, financial advice. advice yeah awesome well we see a comment from auto gym loving the show so if everyone's loving the show please like the like give us a like comment down below right now what what your favorite thing about the show was whether it was Medi's in-depth deep dive on his investment thesis on polygon or the one of the three uh, kind of web two to web three innovations or Medi's portfolio. Let's let's see what you guys liked and make sure to like the video. And if you're not subscribed to Token Metrics, you've watched us for an hour. You might as well subscribe now. Awesome. Well, I think that will do it. Make sure to stay tuned on the Token Metrics channel. We are going to have Bill's regular market update, but it is pre-recorded since he is at Consensus um, and giving everyone uh, at the conference his great wisdom and his he's definitely a technical analysis wizard. So. Jacob, before we go, Megan has yeah. this question. She asked twice. She asked twice, so I have to cater towards her. Uh, she yeah, asked, sure. "Why do I like Nir?" So, so, so Ethereum in their roadmap have have a thing called dank sharding, which is like a sharding mechanism. Nir already has that. So near is slightly ahead in terms of the sharding roadmap Ethereum has, and they have already implemented that. So I kind of think of near as Ethereum roadmap already implemented without the L2, and hence it's part of my portfolio. Also, the user experience and developer experiences, it's amazing. It's like they have used all the Google and Microsoft tools uh, and consumer app experience to kind of make it very Web2 friendly. So, so they're using Web3 technology, but the interface and UI UX is web to light so that's the reason why i like it maybe Hope, hopefully that answers your question awesome and yeah i think i just found my favorite comment of the day from kit saying i need a mint pass that will give me a hug from bill every day <laughs> that, that'd be awesome Love the comment. <laughs> yeah yeah I'll, I'll get that I, i'll try to mint that uh, nft myself to be honest <laughs> yeah same <laughs> Well, uh, Amadi, thank you. You guys at Token Metrics are awesome. Maddie, Jacob, nice one. All right. Thank you so much for everyone tuning in. Make sure to like our video, our live stream, and stay tuned for Bill's market update. Thank you, See everyone. You everyone.